Earlier, I spoke with Duncan Breen, senior associate of the Refugee Protection Program at Human Rights First. I asked him about the growing number of Syrian refugees and the difficulties they face, as well as the issues confronting the countries taking them in. The refugee crisis is currently the largest humanitarian crisis in the world, um, and this is really drawing resources both from the donor perspective as well as humanitarian organizations, uh, UN agencies, um, and there's a lot of concentration on uh, the Syrian refugee crisis, and, and that's obviously understandable. I mean, you've got, the numbers are huge. You've got uh, two million Syrians who are now refugees. Um, there are statistics such as a new refugee every 15 seconds, which is basically 5,000 new Syrians becoming refugees each day, um, and large populations living in some of the neighboring countries. Uh, Lebanon's hosting 700,000 Syrian refugees. Uh, Jordan has 500,000. Uh, Turkey has 450,000. And then also big populations in Iraq and, uh, and Egypt. One every 15 seconds. And if I'm one of those refugees, where do I go? And, and am I being embraced with open arms? I would suspect not in many cases. Well, I think that... In fairness, um, the governments within the, the region have actually been very generous in terms of allowing refugees in um, by and large. I mean, these, these are huge populations, and, and a number of the governments within the, the region are also experiencing you know, certain challenges um, on the domestic front. Um, but we have seen in some places that there has been increased resistance to, to refugees coming in. And particularly for us as an organization, we're concerned about situations where governments have been restricting the number of people who are coming in or otherwise restricting individuals with certain profiles. Um, so perhaps Iraqi refugees, Palestinian refugees, but overall also controlling the number of, of Syrian nationals who can cross each day. Um, and that's specifically a concern from a human rights perspective, that people are fleeing violence, people are crossing to seek international protection. And that's something that the international community needs to keep pushing on. As you look at the landscape, uh, what country would you say is at the breaking point or close to the breaking point in terms of absorbing this many people? Well, I think that there's been a lot of concern around uh, the situation in Lebanon and the impact of having um, around 700,000, at least 700,000 refugees there. Um, what Lebanon has done very well has actually has been uh, not restricting people to refugee camps. They've actually allowed refugees to integrate and make use of some of the local infrastructure. Um, that does come with some of its, its challenges as well. And that's why it's really important for the international community and the United States really to uh, keep supporting Lebanon as well as other countries within the region in terms of the, the bilateral support, um, support for some of its, its in infrastructure, you know, such as access to health care, education, so that it benefits both the host community and the refugee community. Let me ask you about the West. The West, uh, the, you see a lot of these leaders talking, or the, the saber rattling. Do you feel like as much is being done in terms of dealing with the refugee population, or could more be done? I think overall, more can still be done. I mean, when we just look at, at this from a financial perspective, um, there are two humanitarian appeals, basically appeals for assistance to refugees in the region, and then another one that, that is focused on the situation inside of Syria. And both of those have received less than 50% of the money that they need in order to be able to provide life-saving assistance until the end of the year. And so from that perspective, obviously, a lot more could be done. The civil war in Lebanon went on for about 15 years. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any end in sight in Syria. Worst case scenario and best case scenario from your viewpoint when it comes to refugees? Well, I think the critical issue for us is really that countries within the region are continually encouraged to maintain their borders open. So in other words, just keep allowing refugees to, to cross, but also provided with support so that um, they're able to um, continue to provide this kind of assistance. That's going to be a key challenge, and we may see growing resistance to that over the, the next while. Um, and that goes beyond, obviously, the region. Uh, there have been issues in, in Europe, for example, as well, where there's been some resistance. Uh, Greece, for example, has not been, been great in terms of allowing uh, Syrian refugees in. And I think that the United States government can keep up you know, the dipl diplomacy in continually raising that issue um, with governments, both within the region as well as further afield. But obviously, the longer this crisis drags on, the more serious it becomes and you know, the more impact this is going to have on, on different countries within the region. Duncan Breen, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thanks Appreciate so much it. for having me.